this video was part of a recorded tutorial session. I'm making it available because I know it will be of help to you. I understand how tough it can be to figure out concepts or problems in math or physics on your own. Trust me, a tutor's help can make a huge difference. My name is Daniel. At the end of this video, there will be information on how you can contact me for questions or requests for tutoring in math or physics. The question that we solve in this video is about projectile motion. It says that, okay, a rifle is aimed horizontally, that is, along the x-axis, at a target 48 meters away. The bullet hits the target 1.9 centimeters below the aim point. In other words, the bullet drops down a little bit. We are asked, what was the bullet's flight time? Neglect the air resistance. Okay, let's get now, let's get to the solution. Let's have some physics fun. The bullet, normally, if you aim, you, if you aim a target, you would think the bullet should go like this. Just go horizontally. But that's not what happens. I'm going to exaggerate what happens. What actually happens is that the bullet drops down. So that's why that's why aiming is very difficult. Especially when you're shooting a very something that is far away. Like there's going to be a drop. And that drop is even more pronounced the farther the target is from the bullet. Are you seeing what I'm saying? So what's this drop according to the question? Are we giving that value? Uh, let me see. Uh, 1.9. Say what? 1.9? Centimeters. So we are giving 1.9 centimeters. But we can't use that because it's too, it's not in the right units. So we're going to convert it to meters. We're just going to say 1.9 times 10 to negative 2 meters. Because 1 centimeter is 10 to negative 2 meters. Okay? Are you fine with that? So, let me ask you a question. In terms of our kinematic variables, like, it's always good to be able to know the variables we have. You know, in these equations, you have a, you have a V not Y in the Y, you have a VY, you have a V not Y, you have time, you have delta Y, and, of course, you have G. What does this 1.9 times 10 to 2 negative, what does it represent? It, like, of these variables, what, what does it, what is it? Um, change in y. Change in y. Good job. So it's just change in y. Now, are we going to use it exactly the way it is, or do we have to do something with it? Because the bullet dropped. Um, so why do you change it to stand, um, sign to notation? Actually, I just change it to meters because I can't use centimeters. Oh. I have to make it meters because SI units. Yes. So delta Y is this number, but because it's a drop, I'm going to make negative. it negative. So it's negative 1.9. So that's the first thing. I have delta Y. Of course, we might as well just continue analyzing the y. I know that t, I do not know because it doesn't tell me how long it took. Oh, it's a what's the flight time. So that's what I'm looking for. Um, what is v not y in this problem? Um, let me see. Um, we don't know. So if the bullet was aimed horizontally, that tells you what V what not Y is. 9.8. That's acceleration. 
What did we say? When something is, when something has a purely horizontal velocity, what does that tell you about the white component? It's zero. That's it. It's always zero. You always have to recognize that. That V not Y is zero because it was aimed horizontally. In other words, the initial... But isn't V, isn't v not Y vertical? It is vertical. But so because all the, all the velocity was horizontal, so there is no vertical component to it. Oh, okay. Now, if something is launched at an angle, then the V not Y is something, right? It's going to be the, this sign, the angle. But when something is launched horizontally, it's like saying this times sine zero, which and sine zero is zero. So that's just something you have to recognize. It, you always have to recognize that. They won't tell you. They will just tell you horizontally. And then it's up to you to realize that, oh, that means that V not Y is a zero meters per second. So since we have, and we also have that G is 9.8. By the way, can you see all these numbers well? Yes. So when we have four things and one unknown, we can use a kinematic equation. In this case, we are going to use the equation that does not involve Vy. Because we are not looking for Vy, and that's going to be what? This one. Why can't we use the number three? Um, my... Number three says Vy squared equal to V not Y squared minus 2G delta Y. Because it has Vy in it, and we don't want to mess around oh, with Vy. Okay. So we go with the one that says that delta Y equal to V not Y T minus half G T squared. V not Y is zero, so that means this is all going to go away. I also left with delta Y equal to a negative half GT squared. And we're trying to solve for time. So we solve the equation for time by multiplying both sides by 2 and divided by negative G. I'm just going to show you this time. So that we get, and we get 2 delta y divided by negative g equal to t squared, and we take the square root equal to time. We take the square root of both sides, just like we did the last time. So if we plug in the numbers, the time of flight is going to be 2 times negative 1.9 times 10 to negative 2 divided by negative 9.8. And we take the square root of that. So it's about 4 times 10 to What was that coming out to be? Um, I, th I can't. I think I got it wrong. What did you get? Right. I got point zero six. Yeah, that's correct. Why do you think it's wrong? Because it's like I, I don't how we're looking for change in y, right? Or we're looking for time, right? Yeah. So this time is like really small. It's a bullet. A bullet goes pretty fast, right? That's why uh, it, that's why it's like okay. <laughs> Yeah, but it's good you were thinking about it, you know. Yeah, it's a bullet, that's why it's 
It's really small town. I'm sure it's going to be correct when you put it in. So yeah, it's about 0 0.063. And we want the answer in two significant figures. Yeah, 0 0.063 seconds. Now, the second part is very, very easy. If I want, I want you to try and think about how we're going to find that. It says, part B says, what is the bullet speed as it left the barrel? Um, so, you ask, what is the bullet speed as it left the barrel? Can we do velocity times time? Exactly. Pretty much, it's saying that we're looking for that V. But we know that when it left the barrel, well, barrel, when it left the barrel, all the velocity was Vx. Because there was no v, Vy at that point, right? There was no V not Y. So we can actually say that V not is Vx. So what we're looking for is pretty much by saying that delta x. It's going to be Vx times time. And because we know that the Vx is V0, so that we can just divide by time that we've solved for. So we know that that initial speed is just going to be delta x times time. Are you, on, are you tracking with me? Um, OK, so I know the original problem is change in x equals Velocity times time. Yeah. So we're, we're looking for a velocity, so that's why you moved the time over. That's why. That's yeah. That's why I divide both sides okay. of the time. Okay. All right. Is the change in x 48? Yes, 48 meters away. Good. Okay. And if you put that in 48 divided by time, you're going to get that initial velocity. And that will be the end of this question. About 800. 800 what? Meters per second. Yeah, that makes sense. Now, that, that seems like a very large number, but again, yeah. it's, it's expected for, I would think, a bullet. You can have, let's, do a, let's do a Google search real quick, like how fast is a bullet? Let's see if our answer makes sense. Okay. How fast is a bullet? Yeah, it's reasonable. Bullets are pretty fast. Yeah, bullets travel about 1,500. Some bullets can travel as far as 1,500 meters per second, according to Google. So this is not even a very fast gun. So we're fine with that answer. So. This teaches us an important point. When you get an answer in physics and it looks too big or too small, you think about the context. But it's a good thing you're doing, though, that you're trying to see if an answer makes sense. Because a lot of times, students will just solve a problem and go, oh, yeah. It's always good to think about, does that make sense? Good. So that ends that question. Do you have any question on that? No. Good. We're going to go to the last one.
I trust that the physics problem that we just solved made some concepts and steps more clear to you. For more help in physics or math, or for specific questions or problem sets that you may be working through, I'm very happy to assist you. And here is how you can contact me. I've had more than 10 years of working with students at all levels in all kinds of physics and math. In math, I've worked with students in Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2, Integrated Math, Statistics, Precalculus, and Calculus. In Physics, I've had the joy of working with many students in High School Physics, AP Physics, College Physics, and University Physics. As you can see, the rates are very affordable. I hope, and I really do hope, that we get to have some math or physics form together.